Today we're going to be showing you how to install power steering on a Landmaster UTV. This upgrade is available on all Landmaster UTVs 2018 and newer. We hope you find this video helpful and informative, so let's get started with our install. First, we're going to remove the hood using a half inch socket. Depending on what year of vehicle you have, the bolts holding the front of your hood may be located underneath or on top of the hood. In this video, we'll be showing a model that has the bolts underneath the hood. After you've removed the hood bolts, carefully pull back the top of the hood that is velcroed to the vehicle. Now that the hood is removed, we're going to start by removing the clamshell case. The best way to remove this is to take a screwdriver and pry between each of the plastic screws. With the clamshell removed, we're now going to remove the steering shaft. Start by loosening the bolts on the lower U-joint coupler. Then, pry open the coupler using a small pry bar or a screwdriver. Once you've loosened the lower U-joint coupler, we're going to remove the bolt holding the top U-joint coupler to the steering wheel shaft. Once the bolt is removed, turn the steering wheel so that it is dead straight. Then, remove the steering wheel. Next, take a pry bar and pry up the bottom U-joint coupler from the gearbox. Now that the steering shaft is completely removed, we can move on to the next step. The next step is to remove the plastic case covering the auxiliary terminals. After the case is removed, now we'll install the controller. Use these two bolts to mount the controller. Place the controller behind the mounting plate. If there's wires in the way, you may need to cut the zip ties making some extra room. Now, hand tighten both bolts. After you have the bolts loosely tightened, use a socket wrench to tighten the bolts. Be careful not to over tighten. Now that we have our controller mounted, we're gonna take our new U-joint coupler and remove the two bolts and the two lock washers. Notice the flat area on the shaft coming out of the gearbox. We'll want to align the flat area on the coupler to this flat area on the gearbox. The coupler should easily slide onto the shaft coming from the gearbox. Next, slide the bolt through the coupler, put on your lock washer, and hand tighten your bolt. Next, we'll mount the power steering motor. Place the motor as shown and slide the shaft coming from the bottom of the motor into the bottom coupler. Now, mount the motor to the bracket using the three bolts shown. Next, we'll take this single bolt and lock washer and slide it into the coupler holding the bottom shaft of the motor. 
Remember at this point, all of these bolts should be loosely tightened. Next, we'll take our telescoping steering shaft and install it. First, remove the existing bolts on the steering shaft. Now, slide the shaft over the top section of the motor, ensuring that the steering shaft slides all the way down. Slide your bolt and lock washer into the hole and loosely tighten. Now take your steering wheel and slide it back into the hole through the dash. Attach the top coupler to the steering wheel shaft. Ensure that the steering wheel and tires are completely straight together. Now turn your steering wheel so you can insert the bolt and locking washer into the hole that attaches the top coupler to the steering wheel. You can tighten this bolt with an impact driver. Now go back and tighten all the bolts using an impact driver. Now we're going to be hooking up the wiring. Cut off the rubber band that holds the wires together for the motor. Now connect these plugs to the controller, ensuring that the wires loop around the bottom section of the motor. Next, we'll remove the wiring from the packaging and cut the white wire, leaving only about two feet. Then strip the wire and crimp on the spade connector. Connect the two ends of the wire harness to the controller. Match up the plastic connectors on the wire harness to the controller. The red LED light shown is an indicator light for troubleshooting. Now take the white wire with the spade connector and plug it into the terminal two spots up from the bottom left. Now that our wiring is all hooked up, we can mount the auxiliary block cover back onto the vehicle. Now we're going to feed the wire harness through the vehicle and back to the battery terminals. The first step is to remove the seat. Then remove the metal floor plate. After the metal floor plate's removed, you can remove the center plastic cover. It's always a good idea to keep your hardware close to the piece it goes with. Now that those two pieces are removed, you'll want to cut the zip ties holding the wires that run through the center of the vehicle. Now take your wire harness and fish it from the front of the vehicle all the way through to the back to where the battery is. Now is a good time to go back and zip tie any loose wires hanging around. Make sure to zip tie the existing wires in the power steering wires together that run through the vehicle. Next, we'll attach the wire harness to the battery. Make sure the black wire goes to the negative side and the red wires go to the positive side. Tighten the bolts back onto the battery, and then we're ready to test out our installation. Turn the key to run, and you now have power steering.
You should be able to turn the steering wheel by using only one finger. Now that we've tested out our installation, it's time to zip tie any loose wires together and put things back together. And there you have it, your power steering is successfully installed. On average, this install takes about one to two hours to complete. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful for your installation. Thank you and see you next time.